Hello, so in today's video, we're going to look at sketching the graphs of arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan. So yesterday, we actually looked at what arc sin, arc cos, and arc tan are. So they're the inverse function of, uh, sorry, the inverse functions of sin, cos, and tan uh, for a particular domain of values uh, for sin, cos, and tan. Um, let's just remind ourselves firstly what an inverse function is, though, before we sketch these graphs. So let's say you've got an injective function, let's say something like this. So this is going to be your f of x there, then remember that the uh, inverse function of an injective one-to-one -one function is just the reflection of that function in the line y equals x. So it's the reflection in this line here. So the um, inverse is going to be like something like that maybe. Uh, so that would be your inverse function there. So when we sketch these arc sin, arc cos, and arc tan graphs, we're going to reflect the sin, cos, and tan graphs over this mirror line, this 45 degree y equals x sign. So that's kind of the objective here. So let's remember that if y equals sine x between uh, minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, so like this graph down here of sine x between uh, minus 90 degrees and 90 degrees, uh, then arc sine is the inverse of this graph. So imagine that you were going to draw like a, a 45 degree degree line like that in so how would you reflect this black line that i've, I've drawn there for sine x well uh, and also yeah let's just label it here that this is one and the minimum point there's minus one so to reflect this graph i mean you're going to get something roughly like this or something like that instead uh or maybe not quite like that but um yeah, something like uh roughly that uh that, that's what you should get something something like this kind of shape um and then, yeah, so what can we tell about the, uh, the well, I mean, let's just sketch that graph over here. So, so the arc sine graph is going to look something, uh, something like this, uh, stopping there and stopping there. So, um, yeah, what can we tell about like the domain and the range of this graph? Well, the domain of an inverse function is the same as the range of the original function, because we, we, we've done that in previous videos. Um, and you can check out my previous video on domain and range of inverse functions that I um, I did a couple months back. Um, so the domain of this arc sine function, so like the x values here, are going to be the same as the range of the sine function. So the sine function, the, the black line, ranges from minus one up to one. So my domain the arc sign, my inverse is going from minus one to one. And now my range of my inverse function is going to be the same as the domain of my original function. My original function had a domain from minus pi over two to pi over two. So we're going from uh, down here, minus pi over two up to pi over two. So the domain for arc sign is going to be equal to um, or will be the set of values of x uh, between one and minus one and the range uh, for the arc sine function is going to be um, basically yeah so again between minus pi over two and pi over two so minus pi over two less than or equal to arc sine less than or equal to pi over two and if you wanted to write this in set notation uh, you could um, or it's going to be the set of uh y values so a set of uh y uh values um between um uh again between uh, minus pi over two and pi over two so the set of uh y values um such that uh y is between minus pi over two um and pi over two uh, so you could say that as well. Um, so that's going to be the, uh, that, that's what the arc sine graph looks like. That's your domain. And this is your range. Um, so yeah, that would be the arc sine graph. Now, how about the arc cos graph? So again, if we draw a sketch of cos um, between minus, uh, between zero and pi. So remember, arc cos is the inverse of cos strictly between zero and pi. Uh, so it goes something like this, the cos graph between zero and pi. You got pi over two in the middle there, pi over two there, and then pi there. Uh, that's one there. That's a y value down there, minus one. Um, so what's this graph going to look like? So it's going to be the reflection of this graph. So imagine you reflect it in this y equals x line. Um, you would get something like uh this. So it's going to basically um your your old y values would be your new uh x values. So it's going to start from here and kind of do something like so, something like this roughly. Um, so that's kind of what your 
uh, graphs can look like if you were to reflect the black line. And this will be your arc, uh, arc cos graph. So your arc cos graph is going to be something like this uh, roughly. So going from there over to, <laughs> I'll try that again, uh, something roughly like that, roughly. Um, so you're going to have a domain which will be the same as the range of the old graph. So the range of this old graph um, was from minus one to one. So the domain now here of your arc cos graph, your inverse is minus one to one. And your range is the same as the domain of the original. Uh, the domain of the original was from zero to pi. So your range is from zero up to a maximum value of pi there. So let's make a note, a clear note of this, that your um, your domain for arc cos must be uh, x between zero, sorry, between uh, minus one and, and one. And your range is going to be between zero uh, and pi. Um, so that would be the domain, that would be the range. Um, so yeah, that's how you can determine the domain and range for arc cos. And arc cos kind of looks like this graph there. And then lastly, the arc tan graph. So arc tan of x um, is the inverse function of tan x uh, when x is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Uh, so remember the arc tan graph between minus pi over 2 up to pi over 2 goes something like this with your asymptotes here. Uh, so we've got a domain for tan. I mean, we can actually just reflect the graph just so we have a rough idea of what it's going to look like. Um, perhaps something more like, I don't know, something more like this. Let's just say something like that. So if we were to reflect this graph in the y equals x line, uh, we, we would get something like uh, something like this we should get. So something kind of goes like that if we reflect it over. So that's going to be our, what the arc tan graph roughly looks like. Uh, so it's a kind of shape like this. Uh, I'll try that again. It goes through the origin because the um, the tan graph goes through the origin. And when you reflect that, it, it just stays the same. Um, and then we've got these. So we before, when we had uh, the tan graph, we've got these vertical asymptotes because we reflect these vertical asymptotes over. We flip them over to the, the y-axis. We now get a horizontal asymptotes here. We now get these horizontal ones. Um, so again... Uh, arctan is the inverse. So the domain of arctan is the range of the original, so the range of uh, tan. Now, the range of tan is from minus infinity to infinity, because uh, we can see it just goes on and on and on down there and on and on and on up there. So uh, your uh, domain, let's just write this down here. Uh, so your domain for arctan is just going to be x uh, in the real numbers. So x from minus infinity up to infinity. And then your range for arctan, so the range, well, that's now going to be the domain of the original. And the domain of the original was trapped between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So your new range is going to be uh, for your arctan uh, between minus pi over 2, uh, trapped, yeah, trapped between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Uh, where we have these horizontal asymptotes. So yeah, this line here, this asymptote there is the line y equals pi over two. And this asymptote there is the line y equals negative pi over two. Um, so yeah, therefore, that's where our asymptotes would be. And that's what the arc sine graph would look like. So the arc sine graph looks like this there, domain between minus one and one, range between minus pi over two and pi over two. Uh, the uh, domain of the arc cos graph is between minus one and one, range uh, from zero up to pi. Domain of the arc tan graph is every real number from minus infinity to infinity, and your range is trapped between minus pi over two and pi over two. So that's just a summary of how we sketch these arcs in, arc cos and arc tan graphs and identify their domains and ranges.